In today's video, I wanna talk about one of the most misunderstood elements of our fishing rods, and that is the difference between power and action. I hear all the time across the industry, even some higher level professionals that will talk about, hey, this is a heavy action rod or a medium heavy action rod. And anytime you are talking about medium heavy or heavy, you are actually talking about the power of a rod. So saying a heavy action, actually really doesn't make sense. And so today I wanna to talk about the differences between power and action and how it can help you to find the right rod for the lure that you are throwing. So stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. This video is brought to you by sportsmansoutfitters.com. Right now at Sportsman's Outfitters, Black Friday sales all over the place. Tons of lures, tons of things that you already use are on sale. And one of my favorite deals right now, if you get any Arc Lancer Pro Series rod, you can get the second one for just $19. That is a $100 rod for just 19 bucks. And those aren't the only rods on sale. So if you guys want to help support the Bass Fishing HQ channel, click those links down below in the description. Now, if you've been saying things like, this is a medium heavy action or a heavy action rod, don't feel bad. I feel like all anglers go through this at some point in their angling life. I remember back in the day when, you know, I would hear from pros, you know, what they're using, and then I would say the same things. I would say, hey, this is a heavy action rod. And that's really not the case. And that is the basis of this video is that there is a big difference between rod power and rod action. And knowing the differences can really help you to understand what rod you should be using with what lure you are throwing. So let's first talk about rod power, because to me, this one's a little bit more simple. And the, the definition of rod power is basically the amount of weight that it takes to bend a rod, okay? So if you have a heavy power rod, it's going to take a heavier weight to bend that rod. If you have a light power rod, then it's going to take very light weight to bend that rod. If you have a medium heavy power rod, then it's gonna be somewhere in between as far as weight. So anytime that you are trying to select a rod to use for the lure that you're using, one of the biggest things that you can simply do is think about the weight of the lure that you are throwing. If you are throwing a, a really heavy lure, then a lot of times you're going to want to go with a heavy power rod because if you go with too light of a rod, it, you're gonna run into issues with breaking that rod. For example, if you're throwing a really big swim bait, you know, you wanna go a lot of times with a heavy, even sometimes an extra heavy rod. Now we're talking about action of that rod in just a minute. But if you're throwing something that is really light, uh, a Ned rig, for example, sometimes a, a medium, medium light rod is really going to handle that Ned rig and allow you to be able to cast it and work it the very, very best. So anytime you are picking out a rod for the lure that you are fishing, think of the weight of the lure. That is really easy for, I think, most people to understand the power of the rod. Now let's talk about action because this is where it gets a little bit more tricky. If you look at these two rods that I have right here, both of these are seven foot, 11 inches, and they are both a heavy power rod. Now this rod over here is what is considered a fast action rod. This rod over here is what they consider a moderate action rod. Now in bass fishing, there are really three main actions that we use for our rods. There's moderate, there's fast, and then there's extra fast. Those are probably the most popular actions out of any of the rods that you use. Now there are slower actions as well, and we'll talk about all that in just a minute. The action of a rod is really going to tell you where on that blank that rod is actually going to bend. For example, if you're using an extra fast action rod, your bend of that rod, the main part that that rod's going to start bending is in the top 20%. Usually the top 20%, the tip top is bending and the rest of it is backbone. Now, if you go with a fast action rod, you're going to add about 10% more of bend. So that rod is going to bend somewhere around the 30% mark 
on that rod. Now, if you go with a moderate action rod, that bend is going to be even further down the blank. It's going to be, you know, 40, 50%. This is a lot of times when we talk about a moderate action rod, we are referring to rods that are almost parabolic. Parabolic meaning it is pretty much bending the same amount throughout the entire rod. Now, if you have a slow action rod, that is really actually a parabolic rod. I remember when I first started fishing crankbaits a lot, David Fritz had designed a crankbait rod that was pure fiberglass and it was a slow action rod. So it really had a parabolic bend. The thing pretty much bent right where you were holding it. It bent all the way through the rod. Now, another thing that you should know about actions is fast and extra fast rods tend to be more sensitive, where moderate or even slow action rods tend to be less sensitive. Now, you may be asking yourself, well, why would I ever pick out a rod that I don't have as much sensitivity? And that's what I want to talk about right now, because this is extremely important. The action of the rod, I base upon the hook that I'm using on my lure. That is, that, is, that is it. I keep it really, really simple. If I am using a lure that has treble hooks on it, any kind of treble hook, I am going to be using a moderate action rod, okay? And if I use a rod that has a single hook on it, that is where I am going to use a either fast or extra fast action. Now, I personally, I don't use a lot of extra fast action rods at all because I set the hook really, really hard. And if I have an extra fast action, I tend to break line. So I like to have a little bit more give. So I really don't use most of the time anything that's extra fast. I usually use a moderate rod or a fast action. So anytime I have a single hook lure, lure like a jig or a spinner bait or a Texas rig, that is when I'm going to use a fast action rod. Now, depending on the size of that lure, the weight of that lure is how I'm going to then judge what power of rod that I need. For example, if I am using a Texas rig, again, a single hook, so I'm going to use a fast action. But a lot of times with a Texas rig, I'm using a quarter ounce weight, maybe, maybe a three eighths ounce weight. So in that example, a lot of times I'm going to use a medium heavy rod. Now, if I'm using a jig, again, single hooked bait, a lot of times I'm using a half ounce, maybe a five eighths ounce, maybe even a three quarter ounce football jig dragging it down there deep. In those situations, you might be best off with a heavy power rod instead of that medium heavy power. Now, coming back to these two rods, you might understand what I'm going to throw on these rods a little bit better now. Again, this is a seven foot 11 heavy power fast action rod. So that is why you see a big Texas rig tied up here. This is an ounce and a half weight. This rod is actually rated up to an ounce and a half. And this is what I use to flip and pitch and punch through matted vegetation. Now this rod over here, again, the exact, almost the exact same, right? Seven foot, 11 inch, heavy power, but this one is a moderate action. Okay, so this is a big rod. This is what I throw big crankbaits on, right? Because again, we have treble hooks here, but this is a Strike King 10 XD. This, this lure right here weighs two ounces, okay? That's a really heavy lure. And because it's heavy, I want that heavy power, but because it has treble hooks, I want a moderate action. Now there's always going to be some exceptions to what I'm talking about. For example, a chatterbait. A chatterbait is a single hooked lure, so you think I would throw it on a fast action rod. I actually used to do that. I had relatively good success, but I actually found that I lost a lot fewer fish by throwing a more moderate action rod. Still, both of them were a medium heavy power rod, but I switched to that moderate action and really started hooking fish a lot better. Now, really important note, with this is that I understand that not everybody can just go out there and buy six rods, eight rods, 10 rods, 20 different rods and try to find the perfect rod for that lure they are throwing. You can make several different lures work with one rod, but your landing percentage might go down and it may not go down a lot. It may go down to 90% or 85%. You still may catch the majority of the fish 
that you hook. But if you really want to catch everything and not lose out on a chance to catch a giant, then having that right perfect rod for that lure that you're throwing is really important. Now, for those of you who do not have a big budget, I made a video right here where I talk about three rods that cover about 95% of all bass fishing techniques. So a lot of the techniques that we discussed, you can do them with just these three rods. You're not gonna break the bank. So if you guys enjoyed this video, I think that you will like this one as well. Please comment below, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.